Ever wondered what Justin Bieber would sound like if he was pop punk? What if we made Mr. Brightside a little pop punk? What if Bella Porch went pop punk? What if Neighbor Before Christmas was pop punk? What if Charlie Puth was pop punk? What if ABBA was a pop punk tune? What if Ghost by Justin Bieber was pop punk? What if Owl City was pop punk? What if Morgan Wallen went pop punk? What if it was pop punk? What if it was pop punk? What if As It Was was pop punk? What if Believe by Cher was pop punk? What if we made What's This pop punk? What if As It Was by Harry Styles was a pop punk song? What if a B C D E F U by Gail was a pop punk banger? What if this song was pop punk? If Without You by the Kid Leroy was a pop punk song? What if Moved by Twenty for Golden and Neon Dior was a pop punk song? What if this song was pop punk? Okay, what if this song was recorded by an emo rock band? What if this song was metal? <laughs> what if Taylor Swift joined in the top band? What if this song was a rock song? <laughs> Welcome to Drag the Lake. How you doing, buddy? What if Drag the Lake was a pop punk song? <laughs> I don't. If that stuck, I apologize, everyone watching or listening. But I just was like, I saw that taking a shit right before we started recording, and I really wanted to show it to you to like let you aware of the dystopia that we exist in uh, right now, <laughs> dude. Jesus it's like Christ. I I hate to I hate to so often talk about like here's a new topic. TikTok's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it is like, I don't know. I feel like it's it's uh I feel like it's getting into our veins in a very scary way. And there is this there is this hilarious thing about TikTok that just encourages it I it like being comics and shit the way we are. Yeah. Um being being comics and everything that we are, um, we're all, you know, we're doing our creative shit and all that stuff. We're always trying to be original and do all this stuff and try to have our own unique voice. But TikTok just goes, no. It, I don't know. Like if you would hit me with some weird conspiracy theory about how it's trying to turn everyone the same and have and create more groupthink and you know some fucking weird thing where the Chinese government is trying to sabotage the uh, American youth because you know you know China don't got the same TikTok. They uh, like they regulate their TikTok. This they may, learn and they this they may, grow. Here's the, here's the thing. You know me. I'm Mr. Anti Government, but also to a bloke. A broke clock's right twice a day. That's right. And and I'm no fan of the Chinese government, but at the same time, when they put a limiter on TikTok where you can't use it between like 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., I go, that's good. That I'll say this. I think people should be free to do whatever they want. But if if voluntary limitations were set on someone, that would be good for them. Yeah. And then the app, the Chinese TikTok promotes like science the and Chinese- uh, Andy, the Chinese famously uh, give very little thought to what if pop punk songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in general, they just go, "Yeah, it'd probably be like if we did songs." You know what I mean? Well, that's like, my main like, gripe. That's my main gripe with the Chinese is their lack of support for pop punk. Yeah, I think that. Oh, so this is this is ultimately this is stemming from not a not a uh, uh, some kind of uh, socio political kind of climate. This is purely personal your feelings on pop punk are not shared the same way because you like you love that mashup i just yeah that video was awesome to me no shout out uh shout out cat shout out catatonic youth very they have a very funny instagram and twitter account but yeah just if you were just listening it was just a bunch it was a uh well actually listening you could hear it too but just that smash (laughs) fucking dude it just it like there's just tiktok just breeds just you get punished for originality on there or well actually no not true necessarily, like, but you have to be uber over the top original. I think more so it breeds this conformity as a user because you get programmed to yeah. just be like, no, I want the same thing. I want the same thing. I want a trend and I want to see everyone doing the same thing. And it's just, I don't know, man. It's, 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 uh, yeah. If you're a creative, I guess, I guess my main point for bringing any of this up, if you're a creative run, take, do a 180 and run as fast as you can from shit like this. That it's just, it's like a, it's a format that is, that is run dry. It's like, honestly, it comes down to where I, I think two things that frustrate me the most about, uh, uh, those trends is when you get stuck in a loop like that. Like if you're, if you're just scrolling through Instagram or something, and it's just a bunch of these like put this that that but number one, number one to me is is the fucking robot voice. I fucking hate that fucking robot voice. 
the this is what if this was a finger emo song like i i like i i don't know why i turned her into a cartoon moose just now but it, <laughs> there's it's that <laughs> stilted fucking voice i hate it so much i hate that it, it is it's just a thing but also uh, if i may honorable mention of a thing that i hate of this trend is the fact that you get to find out how wrong people are about what pop punk is <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> where they're just like that. I don't understand. This is just like a current pop song. Well, you that was like the slow de- pop punk song. You just turn this into a, Oh, I just, I just talked to like the robot lady you, pop punk song. Uh, I, I don't understand it. I don't that's know. like the slow. Uh, that's like the slow degrading of the validity of the punk goes pop CD series. Yeah. By the by, the third album, they've just got like some synth rock band, and we're like, other. They just turn it into another pop song. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I don't know if you know what punk is, guys. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, this this didn't go anywhere. It don't just, get me wrong. The, don't get me wrong. The punk goes series has a. Uh, I was just talking about it on uh on some of the reaction videos i was making which shout out uh shout out all time lows record label for blocking my video um (laughs) so fucking annoying dude record labels call the video game companies and get on their fucking level let us just post your shit wake up okay i don't like i don't have a legal argument i don't have any i don't have any like metallicas i don't have any like thought out concrete art just let me fucking do it i don't know it helps (laughs) No, legitimately though, I think if I think if the music industry took some um pointers from the video game industry, they'd be uh they'd be able to make money for a lot more people. You know, like the Cardi B's of the world ain't ain't hurting for money. But there's a lot of people, dude. There's a lot of people uh who are pretty up there who are not making as much money as you think. And I think if I mean, we've talked about the problems with the music industry a million times, but I think if the million music industry, because like I think it was genius with video game companies, just like when you post Let's Play videos and mm-hmm. you post stuff like like just letting people use the video game footage. There's no, yeah. there was no like, okay, you guys can do this if you do that, or you can do. They're just like, just use it, all of it. Right. You know, you know, it was funny. The only time problem, you know, when the only time problems arose with any of that. When? Is when video games used uh like licensed music in it. So like <laughs> when Cyberpunk, yeah. you know Cyberpunk? Uh yeah. Yeah. When yeah. Cyberpunk uh 2077 came out, um, dude, they literally had a streaming setting. So there would be when you drove your car around, they would play radio like in Grand Theft Auto, but they would use actual copywritten songs. There was right. actually the soundtrack was really good. Uh bands like Run the Jewels, um, they would like Run the Jewels wrote an original song for the show they were actually a rap group in the game uh, original song for the game they were actually a rap group in the game oh, that's cool. um but they actually the video game had a setting for when you were streaming because the problem was when you'd be streaming on twitch if someone made a clip a lot of the, a, lot, a lot of the record labels were fucking twitch streamers because someone would make a clip from your stream and then you have this thing on twitch where you have your past streams and then you'll have a section for clips So people can see highlights and stuff of your stream or they can highlight a part of it they really liked. And if you happen to have copywritten music in that highlight, record labels could hit you with a DMCA strike and come back later. And dudes would just log on and be like, where the fuck's my channel? Or they would just log on to like a channel strike because one of their fans decided to clip a 30 second uh, moment that had a copywritten song in it. The the, the record labels need to just fucking catch up to the video game industry. And I think they'll be able to make a lot more money for their artists. That's my thought on it. Yeah. Why wouldn't they be able to somehow monetize that? Like they do streams in some way, whether it like be however many times it's played in a video game or how many times it could be played or you don't want to, you know, or like even like you said, offer bands the opportunity to write original songs for these soundtracks you know what i mean like that's maybe a little bit more work by the band but like you don't have to put that much work into it you can have so that way there's exclusivity through the gaming thing but then you can actually like learn how you can monetize that song like have a flat rate for bands or something like that there's there's enough enough license free music that like that's a nice touch and everything like that. But for apparently for as much of a headache as it is, if they're not going to adapt, they need to just stop using that music in those games. Like, yeah, no, I hear you. I think, uh, I think a bigger thing too, is just the record labels need to just record record labels are just too, like they need to get their little cut of every interaction. You know what I mean? And they don't see the fucking bigger picture. Like the video game industries are really good 
at seeing the bigger picture where if you have all these kids posting your game footage and they're posting compilations of look at this shit, look at this cool shit I did in your video game and did all this stuff. Yeah. Um, how much time I'm devoting to the thing you put out. Like, yeah, it's going to make, I mean, there's a bit of flattery. I know they're like, they're, I sound like a fucking comic pr promoter or something like that. It's about exposure. This is a good opportunity, <laughs> but it's like, it's legitimately, it's free advertising. It's like, it's free advertising. And it's also like, it's kind of a, it's kind of somebody spending their entire fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, because but more so than that, more so than that, it's just accepting what the median is. So like in reference to comedy, like when these fucking Instagram accounts, like I was just talking about this on uh, a video I made recently. Do you remember when there was like a big controversy? Because do you remember that Instagram account for that one dude? It was called, he was called himself like the fat Jewish. And yeah. he was, he was taking yeah, yeah. comics tweets and then yeah. it would be crazy. He would take comics tweets and make it look like he thought of it when, right. And a lot of comics would be like, take my shit down or something like that. And when in actuality, they really should have just been like, bro, just tag me in the fucking post. Yeah. Yeah. A I, lot of, I appreciate uh, you sharing. Because <laughs> a lot of comics would bitch about it. And then a lot of fans would just be like, we don't care. So like, they don't care who wrote the joke. They just, or I should say like, they don't care that the joke got stolen. So the fat Jewish, it's like, bro, you don't have to pretend you wrote it. Yeah. They don't care that they don't care who did it. They just want to see the joke. So, and then also too, on top of that, you can just screenshot a fucking tweet. It's easily stealable. I always say yeah. like comics getting mad that their tweets getting stolen. It is annoying, but it's also mad that you got, it's like you got shit stolen from uh, your yard at like a warehouse, but you kept the gate unlocked. It's like, I don't know what you, I don't know what to say, <laughs> yeah. dude, your shit's easily stealable in that median. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was it's kind of a thing of like just understand what like just understand what the median is and just be like all right well all this shit's easily stealable just start pestering them to be like dude just give me fucking credit so i can get some follows off the joke i made like stop right. you don't need to pretend it was you stop so the same way the record labels it's like dude just understand what it is just pull it back and let people use the music more and then be like oh you like that you know, advertise that they got like merch and live shows and all this other shit, like encourage. Yeah. Cause then more people will use your shit. More people will hear the artists. And then you can then take that funnel. That that's what the video game companies do. You're like, Oh, you like that guy playing that game? Well, guess what? You can play that game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> here's it's a place. Here. Here's a place for you to buy that game. And yeah. it's like, Oh, you like that. You like that artist. Well, you can go see them live or you can go buy a t-shirt of them right. or yeah. Yeah. I, I think they also need to do I think they also need to figure out a way they need to figure out new ways to make money for these artists, because I think just the world and I'm not saying that's an easy endeavor, per se. I just think the world of uh, music, it's a different world and you can't yeah. just you can't just rely on album sales like you used to. So I think I think I think musicians need to put in more work and it's you know, I, I get it's one of those things it's like it's easy to just say that. Yeah. But I think it, and I understand it's easy to just say that, but I think it's the fact. And I think musicians need to may sort of expand their ma expand their revenue streams and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think overall it's just adapting just to where, where we are. Like even you say like record sales, they can't rely on, they can't necessarily, it's main, mainly nowadays. It's if you get the opportunity to perform live and merch, that's that's basically what a lot of bands everything else like even writing new songs it just seems like that's not the thing you necessarily make money on anymore and whatever deals that they that bands because you know i know it from going all the way back to tony Hawk. somehow for tony hawk it it i feel like it only benefited all those bands every one 100 percent all of those songs became instant classics in everybody's mind because it was like the perfect fucking soundtrack whoever curated that first album would be a producer that I would want to work with on, you know what I mean? On future projects for sure. That's the person that should be working every video game soundtrack, every, every single one, because somehow that I think worked out for everybody. Yeah. It helped to, <clears throat> it helped to legitimize the game, you know, to, to add that extra element of something like, uh, and, and I think EA sports kind of did it for a little bit. They, then I think they got a little bit too full of themselves. You know what I mean? I think Tony Hawk kind of did too. Eventually when they 
I actually bought the American Wasteland soundtrack. <laughs> oh yeah, where they did all the fucking covers. It was fucking incredible. I really Bro, I almost got in I almost got into like a pretty loud argument with a with a chick <laughs> in high school because she was like, dude, because I remember I was going on about the American dude. It was like, great. Let me look that up. But the that's American Wasteland soundtrack was a big fucking deal. Um, because if anyone doesn't know, because like if anyone's not familiar, I'm sure everyone listening to this is familiar with the glory of Tony Hawk, one of the best games ever made, and just spreading the good word on a lot of good music. But the American Wasteland soundtrack that was a big deal just because it was, um, it was all these punk, it was all these like punk and emo bands that we knew and like hardcore bands and stuff, and they were just doing these dope covers of these like old school punk bands. So it was yeah. like a cool, it was a cool melding of all the bands that were sort of on at the time it mixing. Perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. In and, fact, it was perfect. Well, and it was nice too. Cause you would have covers like, cause like, here's my thing with a lot of the Gorilla older Biscuits records is on there, dude. Like it's, it's fucking yeah. like, well, here's my, all that boy he, does Gorilla Biscuits. Here's my thing with a lot of the older records is I enjoy them. I enjoy the songwriting, but just sometimes I, I sometimes I can't get like I don't I don't have that um I don't get that warm feeling some people get when they hear like a recording that's not super great like I like I don't know I I I I I maybe got a little bit uh spoiled because of what era I grew in grew up in and most of the bands I listened to had higher quality recordings so when you listen to the fucking you know, when you listen to like the old and I know we've joked about them before, but this is the band that just popped into my head. But when you listen to the old minor threat recordings and yeah. they just sound like they sound like they did it all in one take, which they probably fucking did. And it just sounds like, you know, you could record some shit in your MacBook a little bit better, which yeah. I guess isn't a fair critique because the technology is way more advanced and they didn't if they had the opportunity, they fucking would. But um, yeah. you, you get what I'm saying. It's like I don't get off on the old school. Oh, this isn't this doesn't sound that great, but it's so fucking raw. So to hear those old school songs like a Gorilla Biscuit song or um, a Descendant song to hear them recorded in a much higher quality way was cool as shit for me. I and actually to reference uh, a band you like covered a band you don't like <laughs> is uh, thrice Being has red, one yeah. of the best thrice has one of the best uh minor threat covers on that soundtrack it's i've actually, ever heard it, it's a duel too it's seeing red slash screaming at a wall like it's it's two songs they cram two songs into one track that are just fucking incredible but my favorite on the entire album i feel like it's from autumn to ashes cover of let's have a war by fear uh it is that one's really good it's fuck dude i'm telling you this is uh the rise against cover not about autumn to ashes dude i'm telling you this it's it has all these are these like this particular group aside from a couple bands like and again this is not this is not necessarily like i i wasn't like i didn't hate them but like a couple of the bands like taking back sunday i didn't really know that much uh census fail that covers good though dude but that but no that's what i'm saying is like they this was the perfect uh um compilation because bands that i did love like thrice the bled uh alkaline trio from autumn to ashes rise against stuff like that uh who else so this was this this actually got me to start really liking this particular compilation got me to start listening or paying more attention to uh my chemical romance um who else uh fallout boy a little bit and um and uh rise well i always liked rise against but like it made me go like, yeah, Rise Against still fucking rules, man. Like Rise Against is like, I, I don't, they don't get, I know that they're huge or big at least, but like, they, I don't think they get enough response, like enough credit for being like a fucking really good fucking band. They don't get brought up whenever you see people, whether it's like a documentary or someone talking on YouTube and when people do like a recap of like dope bands yeah. from a certain time period. Rise Against almost never gets brought up. Actually, you know who gave them, you know who gave them a huge cosign? That book, I always tell people to check it out. Um, oh, by the way, I was just Googling. Gallows actually does a really good cover of Seeing Red too. I because I, I was trying to remember that. They uh they never like posted on Spotify and everything, but you can go on YouTube and listen to it. But um, that book I read, Sellout by Dan Ozzy. Uh-huh. 
Really good book. If you guys haven't heard it, it's called Sell Out, the major label feeding frenzy that swept punk, emo, and hardcore. Basically, when fucking Nirvana blew up, that helped fucking Green Day blow up with Dookie. And then everyone was like, we need a pop punk band or we need an emo <laughs> band. Rise Against was a part of that with... Uh... Like, what if Nirvana was a pop punk band? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, Rise Against was part was a uh, part of that whole wave, and they gave them a big shout out in that chat in that book. I think they did a whole chapter on them. Under for for sure underrated band, but but even though that they are, oh, but my point was outside of the outside of that, you don't see a lot of people giving the nod to Rise Against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, this is this was a great compilation of all like a lot of if not all of the songs are songs that I love, and then. Some of the bands I'm like, I'm hot or cold on some of the bands that I really like. I was like, yeah, this this covers OK. And then other ones, like I said, uh, Astro Zombies by my, my Chemical Romance was like, this is they fucking this is this rules. I love this. And it, it really did kind of like get me to like them a little bit more, or open up a little bit more to My Chemical Romance, who in my eyes were this. Like just this band, I was just like, what the fuck are they doing? Look, like, <laughs> like, what are you what are you guys doing? Like, just enough with all this, like, just do the songs. Don't you don't have to do all this. But then I get it. They like they did a them doing a misfit song makes total sense because there could have been somebody in a fucking basement somewhere in 1977 that was like, guys, what are you doing with the makeup and the fucking your hair all like this? Like, what are you what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like there could have been somebody that discouraged the misfits. So it gets me like. No, they like the theatrics and the performance of it more. So I still, it's still when it came to like bands like Panic at the Disco and shit, I was like, all right, that's where, that's where I'm at. I'm done. <laughs> when you start turning it into a Broadway show, I'm out. But my, oh, yeah, fucking dance, cabaret, like, yeah, like cabaret, a cabaret emo. Yeah, like, well, I've got a stick and I'm going, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> like, all, right. <laughs> all right, guys. Bring out the clown, bring out the mimes on stilts. <laughs> woo. I like, don't get me wrong. I liked I liked every iteration of Panic at the Disco. I still listen to them. I like Panic I'm not at the Disco against them as a as I like music. Panic at the Disco. I like Panic at the Disco a lot, but they were but? they were hard to like really get deep into because you're just like, yeah, dude, with your little fucking your little fucking vests and all your goddamn minds on stage <laughs> and shit. And all the buttons are a different color and shit. Like, and not like, not that I'm not a, a, an inclusive guy. I'm progressive. Sure. But you know what I mean? Like, look, I just, I, but, but can I say this, Andy, honorable mention to whoever, I can't remember the lead singer's name of panic of the disco, the song, Brandon Yuri. He, the, the songs that he did with uh, Keith uh, from uh, Keith Buckley from Every Time I Die, like the Every Time I Die song he's on. Yeah. It's fucking phenomenal. Well, he has, I'll say this, I'll, I'll go on record. He has arguably the best voice in modern music. Okay. Like, we, like, no, and I, I know that, I know that might be insane for people to hear, but like, go do the research, go watch him live, go sit, <laughs> go watch him sing every part of fucking Bohemian Rhapsody. Dude, there's these dudes who have these videos breaking down his vocal range, and he has like an insane. Vo now I'm sure there's probably some fucking, yeah, you know, there's probably some. My cousin's fucking, pretty good. Some ma what? My cousin's pretty good. I, I don't know if you've seen this YouTube video, but I mean, yeah, or, there, or there's probably some like classically trained Broadway, whatever the fuck, that's technically better. But I don't care about that. I care about <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> I care about Brandon Yuri and his tight, tight body and yeah, I, I his agree. tiny little tight body that I could throw around if I decide to lean that way for a night. But 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 they're not. <laughs> but Panic at the Disco is not on this. Uh, uh, so I didn't give them a, a more of a chance, I guess, back then. But some of the bands, I think that was this was ultimately a, a nice melding of worlds of like, eh, I don't really give a shit. But I'm like, damn, that's a really good cover. And also. It kind of uh, just overall, just one of the best. But they like somehow Tony Hawk Pro Skater with all these artists, with everything else, they found out how to do it, turning it into a soundtrack, having bands do songs particularly for this game. Why can't you do that? Even if they are covers like there's th there's ways around it. Tony Hawk figured it out. Get on it. Video games, you fucking losers. <laughs> nah see i'm not i'm not even i'm not even saying like oh find ways around it i'm just like just chill oh, do fuck. this <laughs> what? Do this. like it's already you don't have to find ways around it just do this figure like look you don't have to figure anything out here you go 
Th- that's no. what you do. I'm not, no, I guess the point I'm trying to make is like, I'm just trying to knock some sense to these goddamn, uh, goddamn record labels where it's just like, just chill the fuck out and stop being dorks. Yeah, that'll that'll definitely work. <laughs> have I them, don't know. Have, well, yeah, have them calm down, not figure out a way for them to make money off of it, Andy. Come on, you know how they work. Here's the thing, though. They're, I think, well, no, I, I, honestly, to what you're saying, I think they could make more money if they fucking did what I said. <laughs> that was my right. disagreeing burp. That that's was my a, disagreeing burp. That's your response, I and, I accept, and I accept your truth. That um, wasn't a response. That was a reaction. You did that. <laughs> hell yeah nah i don't know i just the fucking just all the goddamn time the record labels are just the like the shit they do i just feel like holds back holds back the music industry because it's like i don't know it co it coincides with the whole fucking thing of why um i don't know it's like i don't know i think about it too with like stand-up comedy where it's just like and you see it with music all the fucking time like all like like COVID happens and all these bands have to go get fucking like day jobs and all this other shit. And you're yeah. just like, you're like, I, I understand it's hard. It's a hard career choice, yeah. but it's but there's always this thing where I sit back and I go, it feels like it doesn't need to be this hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it feels like it feels like being in a band like this when like. Bro, you go on people, you go on these bands, Spotify, and you got hundreds of thousands of people listening to them every month. And yeah. whenever they post a video, it gets, so there's always these people, there's always these people, um, like there's, there's so many people that want to consume the product. You get what I'm saying? There's so many people that want to consume the product. And it's just like, I feel like these record labels are holding everything back because they're so focused on the old model. They're so focused on like the the early stages or like pre-internet model of making music of uh, making money off music that you're just like, you're just holding back. I, it feels like they're okay. holding back so much potential profit for all these bands. Yeah. 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 Definitely. They're, they're, they're holding back progress in any way to, to monetize. It was like, we were talking about in the MMA show of like, of, of why would companies like halt other revenue streams if like if if there is supply or if there's demand why not offer some kind of supply like yeah you can monetize it you can like you're a fucking businessman like make business decisions idiot <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like if people want a thing you have access to that thing you're the only one that can give access to that thing why would you either halt it up it's not even about growth or anything like that it's about you losing out on money like you could be making money for yourself and these artists like it's just it's just a smarter thing why not have it? And it would just make everything better. The yeah. production overall better. It's not going it, to, it's just a, it's a weird thing. It's kind of like how, like how Apple does the, their pictures. Now. Like if any newer Apple phone or uh, operating system or whatever on the phone, like when you go to take a picture, it like automatically puts that thing on where if you're taking it in a lower light, it does that thing where it like takes a, a like a, a different, it, it won't let you take pictures in lower light. It always like it like has this timer kind of thing, almost like one of those old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you got to wait three seconds or five, yeah. seconds or whatever. It just automatically turns out. There's no way to have that off all the time. You always have to turn it off before. Like it's 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 a weird thing because they don't want. Most likely, what the theories that I've heard and I agree with are uh, basically like. They don't want shitty low light pictures going out, and it's like, well, then fucking, I don't know. What are you doing? Like I. Is that really up to you to do that? Yeah, like yeah, it's their phone, it's their camera, it's their. I mean, yeah, but it's still it's one of those things of like I don't want, but why can't I just not have that? Why can't you like put something in the in the water, put a watermark on that says not, you know, yeah, iPhone approved or something? You know what I mean? I don't know. What do you what do you want from me? Like, just, but there's obviously there's, I I haven't heard a ton of people complaining about it, but the people that I have or you know. It, it's the same frustration of like, just let me take a picture. I know how to take a picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to just take a blobby black picture and just be like, this is a perfect one. Like, it, and it doesn't make it necessarily better, but it's just more control for them. So yeah. you have the control. Why are you abusing it? Like, sure. Yeah. Come on, like help us out. Yeah. Charter yeah. Board. I feel you on that. I, I I'll say this too. I was thinking about this. Um, I was thinking about this too. I, I, 
because I don't want to be the guy who's just like, fix it, fix it, fix it, and not offering any like any like like ideas or anything yeah, yeah. so i will i i will i'll say this i i, I will try to think of things because i don't want to just be that guy just saying well, fucking do this and not contributing so i i will personally try to like think of things hopefully before the next time this gets brought up because it is simple. like it is a thing i'm like super passionate about because i i dude i like there's so many fucking bands like how many stories um how many fucking stories do you hear of like either bands quitting because the money wasn't there or they'll they'll like lose a member and like get completely swerved because yeah. of money and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Because this is a thing I this is a thing I'm like passionate about. But also this at the same time, I do identify that I'm not I'm not throwing out any ideas. So I get I get that I'm being a hypocrite to a degree, I guess. It's so but it's so to me, it's just so simple, though, because it's it's like it. Make it a sub a subscription thing. Like if you're a Twitch stringer, a, st a streamer, and Twitch has a, a deal with Spotify, any music that's available for search on Spotify, much like we do through Anchor when we are making our list episodes, anything that's available through there, yeah, you can stream it through your your page or whatever. Like, but you pay to have that access. You pay an extra if you already have a Spotify account. It's five extra dollars a month. If you don't have a Spotify account, but you have a Twitch, a Twitch account and you want to access those songs here, you can do this. Yeah. $15 a month that way. Like, like it's so it's, they already figured it out when they had to adjust. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why can't you just adapt this much like anything else? If you want to add licensed music to your stream, you can. If you already have a, a Spotify account, you can link your Spotify account and just upgrade your uh, account $5 a month. Or if you don't have one, click this button and you can pay $15 a month. And in your streams, unlimited, you can play whatever songs that are available on Spotify. So you can search a song, you can search a playlist, whatever's on Spotify, and you can stream it through your thing and and whatever. The UFC, and like, like I said, with video games, they figured out how to do it correctly, like through NFL. That's a feature that is really helpful when playing a game. I wish they had more songs. Wait, what? When you're when you're playing the game, it makes as far as like the the element of it. When people are walking out, you know, they have the song that would be playing in an NFL uh, uh, stadium when the team's walking out. When they kick off, they play. You know what I mean? They play. They're playing licensed music. It adds to the production, like I've said in the past. So if you want to have streamers be able to use this music and if it helps whether it be through a video game or anything like that like you already put it in there you already agree that it should be in there let them play the the music yeah yeah right? now it's I, I i i personally i hear what you're saying with the spotify idea and i think that's like i think that's like a decent alternative but i'll go back to my original point and then we can move on to this because i think we're talking in circles a little bit but <laughs> i i think i'll say this to be like the record labels i think if you just if you just pull off, pull back, chill out the way that the video game companies do, I think it'll spread more music. Music will be popular. And then there will be other more, there will be other options to create because music will be more like, like there'll be a bigger culture of people being like fans of music like that, because you're not limiting their access to a degree or you're not limiting like creatives of like spreading it and stuff like that i think it'll create a bigger culture of people being like hardcore music fans and then in turn more pe people will be willing to spend more money on the music because like if you look at video games like it's a fuck like it's a whole fucking personality to just spend all your fucking money on all the video game shit like that yeah. like i think music is also too obviously a personality but i think it ends up becoming like almost a background to the other shit you're doing. So it's not, they're not the, the way that everyone's giving all their money to like a video game company. People are not do like, people are including music into the shit they do, but they're not doing it in a way where they're like, I'm all music on all my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like they have a karaoke channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's move on. I had a few things, but we are at the 30 minute mark and this may take a minute. I wanted to save this for a little bit later. So for the people that don't give a fuck, we don't have to like front load it, but we are, as you know, 
um, we are music detectives and we all, we like to, we like to get into a case and when some, uh, no good nicks get out there and possibly goof off a little too hard, uh-huh. we like to keep them honest. And, uh, this is Andy, what we keep them honest, Andy, 100%, but no, they're, uh, so if you guys have been watching, uh, if you guys have been watching, we've been on, we've been keeping our fucking nose to the grind on this dance, Gavin dance, Tillian case. And there's some interesting developments. Did you read into any of these? I was, uh, what do you mean? The allegations as far as like what was going on? I thought this was, I oh, thought so for context, incredible. for, for context, for people listening. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a fan that claimed that, uh, Tillian lead singer of, uh, Dance, uh, Dance Gavin Dance like sexually assaulted her. There was a lot of he said, she said. Me and Pat, our general vibe on the matter was like I I I feel I, I'm trying to remember exactly what I said, but I remember being like I'm inclined to believe the girl, but I'm not a hundred percent sure because the way that uh, Dance Gavin Dance and Tillian responded to it, it didn't put a lot of faith in me. Like yeah. it didn't it didn't feel it didn't feel uh, on the up and up. And stuff like that. So I don't know, like, because here's the thing. I think in a lot of these, like, he said, she said things, people will be like, well, sh-, like, you'll have one party that goes, it happened. Then you'll have the other party that goes, it didn't happen. Yeah. And then you're kind of like back at zero. Yeah. And it was kind of a thing where I was like, this is my gut, but I, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% fucking sure. So I'm not going to make any hard stance on a matter. I'll just let you know what my gut tells me. So, yeah. That's where we're all that's where we're at, where I was like, I'm inclined to believe the gal, but I'm also like, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Right. Yeah. So uh, but what happened recently is uh Subtilian got up on Reddit and put up a big uh he called it a clarification. <laughs> and I was gonna so I was gonna like whittle this down a little bit, but then I started reading it, and it's actually not that long. So um yeah, you can go through discussion. What clarification discussion? <laughs> so we can go through this re- here. We can go through this real quick. Um, he goes, I want to thank everyone who has supported the band's decision to allow me to return to recording and touring with them. I appreciate the patience of both my bandmates and the fans over the last few months. Despite attempts to be open and honest about our decision, there are still a lot of misconceptions about what happened in the past and why I'm in an, into treatment. So it's become clear that I need to provide additional information that I had hoped wouldn't be necessary. I'm going to start with happened with Michaela earlier this year and give you a timeline. Forgive the straight to the point manner of delivery, but I want to lay down the facts. Well, timeline. That's what we've been wanting this whole time. Yeah. And th- this, yeah, we're, <laughs> You're kind of getting to what I was like. My fucking dismount of this whole thing is we when we read through this, it's kind of going to get to a point where you're like, could you have just done this from the get go? Yeah, literally. This is what we this is all anyone has wanted the whole time. <laughs> yeah, because it's like I like the more I read because if you read through it, it's a lot of uh, because like so. So with this first young lady. It's it's yeah. a, a lot of the info in the first end is like we hung out, had dinner. It was good. We texted, flirted. And then like this time we had sex. That time okay. we had sex. The most poignant one. Um, yeah, because apparently I guess I guess um, on April, April 26 uh-huh. is one was like the biggest allegation. And he right. was just like, I have I have the, the deets. I have the receipts to show like, right. Uh, yeah. He's like, I flew out to Spokane to continue the tour. She mentioned through text that she wanted to visit family in Cleveland and hinted at seeing me again, but I didn't respond. We didn't see each other the other day, but since then she has alleged online that some assault happened on this day to retroactively match her timeline because she bragged on the internet about our relationship on the 25th. If she were bragging about the relationship on the 25th, her original story wouldn't add up that she felt wrong on the 24th. And um, yeah, at one point he says, yeah, at one point he says like, that was the main matter at hand. Right. That yeah. was like, that was the, that was the thing that, <laughs> that got me kicked off the tour. <laughs> that's, what he meant to, that's what he wanted to say. It was just like, this is just for clarification. This is what I get kicked off the tour for. I, I had a consensual fucking relationship with the young lady and then she said I didn't and then now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then she said, "Nah." 
<laughs> Cause like the re- and here's the thing, the breakdown of it is good, but like the rest of it literally is just like, and then we did another consensual sexual type thing, and then another consensual thing. And but here's my thing, it's like in the same way that when one of the girls was breaking down the story, it just felt very honest. Like this, and here's the thing: he also has this huge Dropbox of like, I'll show you all the text, yeah. dude. Here's everything that happened. Here's every time we we put mouths on genitals every single time. Here it is. And then we went to dinner. Then she came to the show, and then you know what I mean, like all this other stuff. Like it, it, it we went to back to the hotel, had sex again. Shortly after, you know, all this other stuff is like, like, I, 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 if he did in fact have some kind of substance abuse issue, I would put put into question some, maybe some of his record, a recollection, recollection, what the fuck, but unless he actually went over his old text messages or timelines of like, hey, we just had sex, let's go to Denny's after this, you know what I mean, like, (laughs) or something, you know what I mean, (laughs) like unless he's actually going through, but. For the most part, if this is his, like, here's what I remember. Here's everything that happened. But really, like you said, the only one that really seems to stand out, the only thing, only thing we really needed clarification on was the nights in question. But I, that was the thing was, what are, what are the actual allegations? Well, here's some days that she picked that were allegations. And here's a bunch of other days that we were just chilling out, fucking relaxing, eating some food, having some sex, going to some shows. You know what I mean? Like the shows that I'm, I'm assuming he means shows that they were performing, but still like, like also apparently they fucked a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you, you've seen him. I would, um, <laughs> but yeah, wait, seen- this one detail is my favorite part. It's so God. Cause like the whole correspond, the whole like breakdown of the timeline is like, very mundane where it's just not mundane like you know there's fucking and then she's like he's like saying she sent her explicit pics and stuff like that but like the it's very like matter of fact the way they do it and it all it almost seems very like sterile like it's a fucking court document or whatever the fuck Uh but then you go to like may 5th and this is when he started to be like yo i don't want to hang out with you anymore um may 5th he goes i texted her thanked her for our time together and broke off the brief relationship she said she saw it coming but understood she then offered to spit in my mouth if i ever needed company and that she needed her flannel back <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah. like, a hilarious detail because he's like because here's my thing so and and once again i'm not trying to avoid i'm trying to avoid reading through this all just because of like the length of it um, cause I, I know I said earlier that I was like, it's not that long, but as I'm looking at it right now, I'm like, that's going to be boring as fuck to listen to. Um, but like, I'm telling you is it's a lot of like, it's a lot of just very matter of fact statements of just like, this is what happened. Then this yeah. is what happened. And then she offered to spit in my mouth if I ever needed company and that she needed her flannel. And he's just kind of like, I don't know the energy of how he's just laying it out. Yeah. And just like, it, 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 you know just laying it out it's like okay this is very this makes me very inclined to be like this all seems on the up and up and once again the drop box of text messages yeah 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 and then uh was it she texted and said she would be in la and would like to see me she said she'd love to see me if i'm ever in sacramento i didn't respond she came out publicly with her story which did not resemble any truth that i knew some of the things she claimed i said and did were in fact things that she had said and done her story was not only factually incorrect but also distorted and divorced from reality. He saw this work out so well for Ariel Helwani. So he wanted to jump on and say, here's exactly what happened. Timeline, like hour by hour, we went to Denny's. We yeah. Again, she asked to have sex with me. I said, no, thank you. She spit in my mouth. I gave her a flannel. <laughs> yeah. The, the matter, the matter of fact nature of it um, really does. I don't know. I give. I, I feel like it gives him a lot of credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I I'll say this. I'll say this. There is a good chance that he's probably like a fucking pretty boy jerk off. There is always that chance. Yeah. But uh, you know, he, he was he was charged with a pretty tall order. So. Well, I think- exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, if, if if it's somewhere in between this, which is unfortunate, if it's somewhere in between her story and his story then it is unfortunately still in the negative for him, but it's still, it, it, it still doesn't mean that like, it seems like they were in a relationship or let's say they had 
they had <laughs> interactions in a re- they had some kind of relationship. Let's just say that. I don't know if they were dating. I don't know if they're boyfriend girlfriend or anything like that. Well, I think what happens with these bands is you get like you'll you'll go to different cities and you'll have girls you talk to in those cities and yeah. it'll be a thing where you're not like completely dating, but you guys are kind of like vaguely together. A really, you have literally just a relationship, like nothing, like nothing behind that. Uh, but you have you talk, like it's a friendship, but it's also more, but it's also not totally. You yeah, know I mean? like it's literally just you have a relationship, <laughs> and I think that's what it was. Yeah, I think it like she was one of ho- however many that he probably. Yeah, I like to hang out with you. You're pretty cool. We have some sex. We eat out. We go to a concert you fucking love you worship me because i rock and then i come back and i fucking come on your face and then we leave and then you <laughs> give me a ride back to the bus leave yeah. me alone <laughs> basically <laughs> romeo and juliet yeah this is weird this is romantic but if it's even any part of that i'm sure there's been plenty of times where he's like she's been like oh my god like because like we're boyfriend and girlfriend and he was probably like yeah, yeah all right so where do you want to eat you know what i mean like it yeah i'm sure to me that's what this says like i'm sure it wasn't like he was like i was very clear with her this is what this is like he's probably like yeah well you know you know i don't live here so (laughs) (laughs) well this all this part too also like if this part's true it also gives credence that this chick might be crazy um Because he goes, she bragged She bragged to her friends online about taking advantage of me at a vulnerable time in my life. She repeatedly lied about how odd our encounters were while acting and yet was affectionate with me in person and through text message. She said in her group chat that our sex was consensual. She stole my underwear and posted a picture of it in her group chat while demanding my vulnerability and grief. She, what? What is this, an 80s movie? What is this? <laughs> yeah. She took my underwear and went into the bathroom and put it up like this, and then all the <laughs> other fellow high school kids cheered. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbasses. Sorry. But yeah, I, no, I, apparently he's claiming that she was just being a fucking goon in text messages, being like, I'm taking advantage of this emotionally distraught pussy. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this, is, this is funny. She joked uh, about taking advantage of... Uh, of- time Tim. with Tim's grieving brother as her quote new target look for a song called new target coming on the, the new album <laughs> new album new target coming to target this summer according to her initial account the third time we met up she went out to dinner with me directly after there was an alleged assault we had uh, sex again the same night <laughs> sex it again a week later he's just like i love i love how specific sometimes he is and how he's like we had sex what kind of sex man let's get into it like, you're gonna <laughs> yeah, get into give the me, details give me had, every fucking sexy sweaty detail buddy you know, what position were you in where were you like where, where were we doggy we're talking reverse cowgirl what are we doing yeah and then um the second one's uh the second one's interesting because he does not have the same type of timeline for it <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, what's, what's this one not as not as detailed more detailed? not as detailed that first that first that first one was receipt heavy this one's just like a quick blurb like like he was like he was writing a fucking opinion on the back of someone's book <laughs> he's like now i'm going to change the subject to the second woman who talked about her sexual experiences on the internet in no way was my initial statement on june 2nd to Yo, they got to use Reddit usernames. Oh, here so we he go. He goes, in no way was my initial statement on June 2nd to Spooky Pooky 8 <laughs> an omission of guilt or coercion. I was merely acknowledged acknowledging her and the part I might have played in her feeling about our night together. In case my statement oh. was not clear at the time, I also understood that the addiction with which I was struggling had taken over my life and I needed to go into treatment and therapy to look at the impact it was having on every aspect of my life. My life. Each of our sexual encounters were both verbally and physically mutually <laughs> consensual. Uh, we had sex more than once that night. There was never an element of physical threat or coercion, and there was constant communication back and forth between the two of us. After we slept in my bed for a couple hours, I took her back to her car. The night ended with her kissing me and telling me she had a good time and would like to see me again. So here's my take on this one. That one might be an assault. 
I think something happened, but they yeah. came to an agreement. There was yeah, a I mean, there was a plea bargain, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, there there might have been some kind of there have been like, hey, sorry. No, I had a good time. Like, no, yeah, but like, are we cool? And like she was probably like, yeah, and she just wanted to go. Like, I think she just, you know what I mean? Like, and there was probably like you said, there was probably like a so like next time when you're in town, like, do you want some tickets or you know what I mean? Like, some, <laughs> Yo, like you just see you just see Spooky Poogie Eight is one of the executive producers on the next Dance Gavin Dance album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some <laughs> she kind just of gets royalties. Well, just because like like I said, there the this one sounds like like I think you're right. Like maybe 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 he went too far at some point she was like no i don't like that and he was just like you know what i mean like they're like you said and maybe they still continue to have sex and he was probably like maybe i should have stopped you know what i mean like i i honestly th this one is pure speculation the the last one yeah 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 yeah. all like uh, said, everything he, we're saying is parody and speculation well he had he had he had you know like you said very detailed of like he's in the group chat he's got fucking he's got an inside dog in that first one the yeah second one might have might actually been a you know what i mean like that he might have pretty been hard too, pretty hard whoopsie daisy he might have goofed a little too hard on this one. Oh and, uh, yeah oh yeah he might have been uh goofing off a little too much and then like you said i don't i and again i don't know if there was an agreement but there might have been like again ugh, dude I, I gotta tell you if if i may Please. if you're asking are we cool most likely you're not cool no matter what the answer is but Wait, what? It doesn't mean that you're not going to be cool at some point. Like if somebody was like, think about every time you've ever asked, are we cool? Like you always say it and you always go like, but, but more if it's more of the you're not 100 percent cool. I, in, I intend to be cool with you in the near future. Yeah, right now, yeah. Right now, like we can't just go from not cool to cool. Like it doesn't like that's not even it's how like it if you pre-order a video. It's like if you, <laughs> you got to go to war. Sorry, I talked all over you. My fault. I'll go for it. It's like if you pre-order a video game, like you own the game, but you don't have the game yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's yours, but it's, yeah. also, it's like, it's in the mail. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like on it's, the way. It's on the way. So it's, it's one of those things of like your, your coolness is on the way. And maybe he, ne he, he might not have had the cool follow through. He might not have had the text afterwards of like the, he might've just been like, well, that that's cool. I don't have to worry about that. He should have, yeah. like, it should have been a phone call the next day. Like, Hey, look, I know we said we we're cool and everything last night, but like, can I, can, is there, is there something I can do? Like, I really feel bad. You know what I mean? Like it might've just been that. And maybe that person was like, look, uh, you know what? I'm not fucking cool about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and I totally, I think, like you said, I don't know what happened there, but you're he's, we had sex. We didn't go to dinner and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? Like I, that's, I, well, that's his explanation of the other one. And the other one's like, he, she's in the group chat. Talking about she stole my fucking underwear. And I'm like, what? Well, this is my favorite pair of underwear. They had drafts on them. I got them from uh, uh, <laughs> Banana Republic. And I love those fucking underwear. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, she came to pick me up at 247. Yeah. I'm sorry. I meant to say 249. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, that's the thing. It's like, because here's the thing. I know from the, from uh, Spooky, share. <laughs> from Spooky Pookie's original post, she was like they met on like a dating app and yeah. did and like there's text with them. Yeah. <laughs> they have yeah. text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like it's really funny to have like the fucking minute by minute breakdown of the first one. Yeah. Cause you know he didn't do that. Like that's the vibe I'm getting. He's like, I definitely didn't do this shit with this crazy bitch. Yeah. So that's why he's posting the minute for minute breakdown on the and first one. They're like, one. yeah, but what about this lady? And he's like, Yeah, well. What? I mean, yeah, we had sex. Hey, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about how about shut up? I've been through enough. Did you hear my fucking bass player died? <laughs> He's fucking dead and I drink too much. Yeah. I drink okay. too much. I went to I went I went to rehab, didn't I? I mean, so we're cool now, okay? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sad. I'm sad and I was on substances. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, you can't pick and choose when like i mean okay maybe okay i don't look man but no that's the this thing is, this is definitely more damning but that's <laughs> the, dude, that's, that's the tidbit that i just realized right now where i'm yeah. like you have a dropbox full of text on the first one yeah. you don't got one for the second they got no history what do you do what did you guys text about your guys's relationship was exclusively text for the most part of the relationship you had 
very little if you're meeting on a dating app it's mostly you're texting back and forth and going like yeah, yeah dude music too like no way i'm in a fucking band it's text heavy buddy right yeah so you you got there's screenshots there's screenshots somewhere so if you're not going to share them somebody's going to and if <laughs> if you're starting to poke the bear you're starting to go like yeah so we had sex and we were cool after that i went to rehab whatever anyway dude, so, if we get if we get if we get popular, I'm gonna be so afraid to go to concerts. <laughs> yeah, people aren't gonna like us. Like, I, but, <laughs> yeah, dude, but honestly, we're... luckily most bands are fucking pussies, and I could beat most of them up anyway, so I'm not scared. Nah, dude. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but if you get if you get their army of pussy fans, we're done. I'm not scared of Dance Gavin Dance fans. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to you, Andy, but I am not scared. You're you are the alpha of the fans. <laughs> What's that PR? What's that PR? What? What's that PR? Oh, 355 deadlift. You're right. My deadlift means I can beat up any dance Gavin dance yeah. fan. <laughs> I'll I'll make him dead and then you lift him. Okay. It's gonna take a lot to get the 355. Now I just have this nightmare scenario where I'm at a dance Gavin dance show and then Tillian stops the song and he goes, There he is! Get him! <laughs> that one right there, the red one. <laughs> Get the red one, the red one, the one with the and the ridiculous hillbilly. He's the one who broke down my statement logically and deduced something that's probably true. <laughs> Girlfriends, get them! <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, man, it is what it is. I don't man, know what I'm else really to. Stupid. I don't know what else to do at this point. Hopefully, this can be because I'm done. To, I gotta be honest. I'm done talking about this, Tillian. Keep your shit tight. I don't feel like talking about you anymore, dude. <laughs> you're 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 somehow the paradox in all of this. Like you are in fact guilty and not guilty at the exact same time. I don't know how he does it, but he is equally definitely guilty and equally eh, maybe not guilty. Like like <laughs> this this does not change my opinion whatsoever. <laughs> he's done it again. He's <laughs> he's done it again. Where I go, uh, you fucking rascal. <laughs> He's done it again. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Um. So let's get. Uh, we got a couple more minutes. I wanted oh, to talk about this. You were. Oh, I was gonna say. Speaking of going to shows, I'm sorry that I overwhelmed you with uh, too many field trip possibilities lately. But I, what was I the other about, one? Like uh, Paula Troy. The the Philly Hardcore Fest is coming up. It was going. This is to hardcore Florida to watch No Effects. Oh yeah, that was really funny. You were like, "Yeah, maybe you guys want to, maybe you and Steph want to go to Florida." <laughs> yeah, like, no, I don't know. It's in August or it's in September. That's like I don't know if you guys plan a vacation. It's plenty of time to plan a vacation to Florida to go see a band. Also, I like see what I do, Andy. Is I like to be practical. Wherever I go, if I'm gonna go visit friends, I'm not just gonna visit friends and talk to them. I do it for content. We do it. We do it. You know what I, I mean? mean, buddy, buddy. Do you know who you're talking to? This is, that's what I'm saying. This is I'm, that's why my life you. is content. I don't know how to exist outside of content. If you and Steph have to go to Florida so that we can go to the show so we can have content, then guess what? That trip to Florida is a fucking write off, dumbass. I don't know how that. Lemaire says that all the time with panties. I don't know no. how that works. Yeah, it's it, well. Also, we might be able to get press badges too. We have a music show. Yeah, fair enough. People want to talk to us about their sexual allegations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to come on our show? We will shit on you a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I still I'm not I'm still not cool with Lars. Oh, Trip. oh, I'm obsessed with your band. You're the reason I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. I will micro manage and critique you aggressively. <laughs> yeah. You think that maybe you should stop doing music though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, sorry, I, I I interrupted you. You were saying uh, we no. only have a couple minutes left. I was gonna say we got a couple minutes left, but I did want to talk about real quick. Uh, I don't know. Do you care about Coachella? Their uh their lineup drop, but it's terrible. It looks. I gotta so be cool. honest. You know we were joking about uh we were joking about content and whatever, and my brain went to let's talk about Coachella because content but i'm i gotta be honest dude and i'm not saying this to be a fucking cool guy because like Coache coachella um well is coachella really the hipster thing anymore i don't it know seems... i don't know exactly what it is you know what i'm saying like it, it at this point it just seems like it's like a it's just another just a a a, a thing like a, it's like almost like the oscar it feels more like a, a an award show like these are these are the bands that we think are hot right now. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and these are like the pinnacle, but it's, it doesn't resemble anything of a music festival that I've ever been a part of in my yeah, own life. I got to be honest. I'm and looking... I thought it went the other way, by the way. I'm sorry. I thought that the top was the end, but the t- the bottom is the end. It starts with uh, these guys and it ends with all of these people. Frank, Frank Ocean, I guess, is, is headlining Coachella. Well, no, they, they, he's headlining Sunday. But I mean, but the, I mean, that's the last day of Coachella. Oh, the shit. They're doing Coachella two weekends. Ugh. That's interesting. A waste. It's just, it's just, it's because they weren't able to do it. What's going on with your video? It's something to do. Whenever we do this, my video is fucking up. That's fine. China? Is that you? What's going on, China? <laughs> I was talking too much shit earlier. Say but no, here. I'm like, I'm like looking through this. And I could probably, you know what this is reminding me of, actually? I wouldn't go to this for free. It's crazy. You know what this is? I would. Well, I mean, that's I would go to this for free. I would go to this for free. I want to. Yeah, what are you talking about? I want to go to Bjork. <laughs> no, it's funny. I'm like, this is actually reminding me. Uh, I'm looking at this list. All right, let's get my fucking video situated. What the fuck? Maybe everybody productions on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the quality of their horse shit. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, it's reminding me of the last year I stopped caring about Warp Tour. Yeah, because I remember because here's the thing. I never had this big interest in like really hitting up Coachella. There was times when I was in college that like Coachella lineups were pretty in line with a lot of shit I'd fuck with. So if I had the money, I'd theoretically go to Coachella. But I've never really had that like urge. But I used to go to Warp Tour all the time. And I remember there was this one year or like somewhat first or second year of college. I was thinking about going to Warp Tour and it got to a point where I was like, I knew a lot of the band names. I actually, I, I didn't know a lot too, <laughs> yeah. but I could count on like one hand bands. I would like, I really give a shit about I'm looking at the, and like, there's been years like at Coachella, like, like run the jewels will be there. They'll have like some dope performers and stuff. But uh, this right here, I think knock loose is on here. I don't, I did not see knock loose on there. I would have, def- yeah, I, I don't know where they are, but I remember my buddy my buddy texted me about it. What the because... fuck is Knock Loose doing in Coachella? <laughs> That's um crazy. what? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean there's there they, I feel like Coachella is one of those shows like that always has the they always have to have like two percent be bands that you're like the fuck they do in there well i guess yeah i guess that's the point is i guess that's the thing is maybe so this is this is my only other thought is the fact that like sure there's a bunch of band there's not usually a ton of bands i think that are in Co- at coachella that i would be like super excited about but there's very little on here that i even recognize so that's the that's the issue but that if 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 in fact knock loose is on one of the days that would make me think that there are other hardcore or punk bands in this group but I just don't know them. So it's more like I would go there to see uh, what bands I do like, but for the most part, like looking at the lineup, like first instinct, nothing gets my dick hard. I mean, not a goddamn thing. I would go see Bjork. I would go see gorillas. Am I like tripping over myself to try to get tickets to either one of those? No, never. Like never ever would I, I I don't think I ever have given that much of a shit about either one of them, but I am interested. Yeah, so- I'm looking through the bands and there's a there's a there's a decent amount of bands that I would go if I had free tickets. Like there's this band in here called Destroy Boys that I've heard before that are actually like Okay. Um they're like a predominantly like like female like riot girlish punk band and they're, they're actually called Destroy Boys. Oh, they mean it like <gasps> Oh, they don't God. like, dude. They don't like boys. Whoa, it's kind of fucked. I that's mean, fucking edgy, dude. <laughs> but that's how good their music is. I get over <laughs> the fact. Like <laughs> I get over the fact of how fucking offensive they are because they want to fucking destroy I boys. That. I don't like that. But I mean, honestly, if they're no, like, your your love instincts love are right. Your instincts okay. are right. Your instincts of survival are right. Destroy boys are and they're anti boy. So boy. and Pat, you're a fucking boy. I'm a boy, and I you're, don't. Need- to be destroyed right now you're you're in their sight dude no but um i i like them a lot because i generally speaking i don't fuck with riot girl music it's like 
you know, not even trying to be a dick. It's like annoying to me. Well, it's, the same, um, it's the same band over and over. It's the same thing. Like it's, well, it it's, never a, gets it's a, yeah, they all sing the exact same way. Like they don't know. And I sh- actually saying they don't know how to sing isn't a critique because no. it, like most of the bands I love don't know how to sing. So that's not, a, I, yeah. I'll back it up. That's not a critique, but they do this like high pitched shriek that, just doesn't sound good in the context of what they're doing. Yeah. If you're hitting me with I wrestled a bear once or fucking dying wish or bands like that, give me a high pitch shriek all day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then and then it's but the part that always gets me, it's it's always just they clearly, and this is what I ha- this is a problem I have with a bunch of genres. It's a problem I have with a lot of indie music. They clearly don't know how to play their instruments and don't <laughs> don't care. To know yeah. how to play their instruments, you know, like punk bands don't know how to play their instruments, but they're like a lot of punk bands don't know how to tr- change play their instruments, but they're trying their fucking darndest, yeah, with what they have. But like, because I think a lot of Riot Girl bands start off as uh, a political vessel, so the music, the like the thought of the music comes second, and it's like. Hey, if I want to listen to politics, I'll go listen to two autists on YouTube debating for an hour. I don't, I like. Make it music first. That's what yeah. actually, that's what makes Rage Against the Machine tolerable for me because I don't I don't agree with half their politics, but the music's fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. They're it's like fucking they- ama- I will say this: they bump Rage at CrossFit. Some of the best workout music ever. Yeah, it's it's a, it's perfect. They inadvertently, when they were trying to uh, wake up everyone to all the social atrocities that were happening over all over the world. They accidentally made the greatest jock jams and the greatest workout music of all time. Yeah. They, when there is a fucking wow. power play and they play guerrilla radio, and it's like, you know what I mean? Like when it's a, like they they go like, and now the TBL power play. And there's a like, bam, 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 bam. Like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Yo, that's so like, fucking funny. Dude, it there, there is there is not a I, I if I'm gonna just a short sidebar. We can come right back to Rage Against the Machine. I wanted to be a fucking sports DJ my entire life, and I'm talking about the guy in the arena that's like, oh, this just happened. I'm gonna play this song. This just happened. I'm gonna play this song. And I would I go to games, and whoever is in charge of that, I I you can ask Dom. I swear to God, <laughs> she will roll her eyes, but she will back me up on this. I go. Do you hear this? They're playing. We had a uh, a goaltender for the Tampa Bay Lightning named Dwayne Rollison. Every time he made a huge save, they played "Keep Rolling, 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 Roll." Come on, come on. You know what oh, I mean? I'll say so, that. I'll say that. That first off, that is. I love that statement you just made because it's something I never would guess you were about to say, but it's so on brand that I was like, obviously that's how that obviously Pat thinks that that's what I go to games for. That was the most, dude, that's the most on brand thing I've ever heard you say. Um, (laughs) They play like, you know who my favorite guy is? The guy who plays music at hockey games. (laughs) The guy who plays limp biscuit and fucking rage against the machine at hockey games. I was at a Boston Bruins game against the San Jose sharks. It was going zero, zero into the third. And they, when they were coming out of the tunnel, they played that song by uh, Offspring, Nitro Youth, where it goes, live like there's no tomorrow. And I fucking teared up. (laughs) I was like, yeah, dude, fucking play like there's no fucking tomorrow. (laughs) And they won with, like, dude, I'm tearing up right now thinking about it. They they play, they won with like 13 seconds left. What one to nothing. I will never forget that game. And it's because beautiful that guy, I was like that. He did it. It's his, he did that. The guy played that song when they came coming out of the tunnel. He's responsible. He's the reason those guys that's spoke, spoken like a true non-athlete. But yes, <laughs> that it, it, there, there's some of the songs from my youth is not only like nostalgic wise are important to me, but as far as like getting you pumped for things, they they like they hit those different. And that's that's why you realize they were they were more famous than other bands. It's not that they don't do that also. But they do it so much more consistently. Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, in the same kind of, you know, it's basically Rage Against the Machine meets Soundgarden, is another yeah. one of those where I'm like, just like, if you want me to get fucking psyched for something or like movie trailer, you know, lifting things, choking people out, any of those things, put on any one of those bands, I'm fucking ready for it. Let's hmm. let's see them fucking score some points. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fucking great, man. I always love. 
I always love learning about your friend, learning <laughs> new things about your friends. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just don't fuck with, I just don't fuck with Riot Girl music because, like, from a musical standpoint, it's when I listen to it, the interpretation I get is that the music isn't the first concern. Yeah. Like when you listen to, like when you listen to the Ramones, mm-hmm. I mean, arguably the easiest guitar riffs ever. Right. In 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 human history. But there is a very clear, you can hear it, there is a very clear, con- like, like yeah. we have to make these songs fucking rip and sound good and shit like that. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't get that. And also I'm biased because the, the, the sound that they're making is awful to my ears. So I'm biased. And you're, yeah. And uh, you're a boy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a boy. And if you want to destroy me, you're going to be my enemy. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> come, come and try <laughs> No, nah, but actually, shout out! To, I I will say that shout out to Destroy Boys. I I'll co-sign them. They are a good band. Um, change the name. Yeah, what? Change the name. Fucking fix it. But yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a few other people. Um, uh, there's a I don't know if you ever heard of Earth Gang. Uh, they're really good. They're a rap group. But once again, yeah. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't shell out the money to go see them. But yeah, I, they are very good. It would be a good place to discover new music for sure. And I know that there'd be cool people and great drugs, but I, I just, to me, Coachella is it, this week or this year, especially seems like more of a, we're just going to jam pack it with anything we possibly can. And like, I, I don't, I don't know how much, like, I'm sure some really incredible bands accidentally snuck through, but like their headliners are like, what is, what the fuck is this? Like, do you know what I mean? Even like, like I said, Bjork is pretty cool, but I don't know how many people are really like shitting their pants over Bjork being at. Yeah, that's a hard, Coachella. that's a hard read. Like, I'm excited what's the about real... it, but that's a bad sign. <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, I'm excited. I would be excited about it, but that's not like a good sign. I am not a good <laughs> measure. Yeah. I, uh, I gotta do more. I got to do more uh, research into like what the Coachella experience is like, because I'm only going based off the, Cause like like I've said the whole time it's been the only time I've ever been curious about Coachella is I was really big when Odd Future came out I was really big into Tyler the Creator and Odd Future and all them and then I remember it was like a big deal when they got Coachella because like they got Coachella pretty early into them because they blew up really quickly so um they got Coachella and it was like a big deal as a fan and stuff so I paid attention there but like from the from the little shit I've seen. The vibe at Coachella just seems, especially now that it's gotten, it seems like it's gotten super fucking corporate. The yeah. vibe at Coachella just seems exhausting for a guy like me. I'm sure, you know, there's a bunch of fucking, there's a bunch of fucking trust fund kids from Brooklyn that come their pants every time they fucking go. And then also too, it just seems like you got to take out a goddamn a lean on your house to afford that, going to Coachella. That that's was, the other fucking part that seems exhausting. That was the part I was going to bring up. There was a couple years ago. I think it's 2000. I can't tell exactly. It was a year I did actually end up getting to see Refused live, but that was when they were still broken up. And I think it was 2011 or 12 Coachella that they were going to be on. And I thought that was going to be the only chance I was going to get to see them. I put Mm. faith in the fact that this seems like a probe, like they're trying to see oh, what's the fan reaction? Would Could we go on another, or how can we play together? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, kind of a test. And I put my faith into it. But Dom and I definitely looked into, we were going to camp out because it was hopefully going to be cheaper. We were going to go drive or fly out to, to California. Probably fly. <laughs> uh, and But that's what we were thinking. It's like, we can't fly with all of our camping shit. Mm-hmm. We would have to, you know what I mean? We'd have to bring it. So we definitely looked into the logistics, but even just the price of tickets just for that day or weekend alone was like, cause we were like, well, we can't fly or fly out to California camp out for one day and then come back. <laughs> we got to figure out. So the price of doing all the stuff we wanted to for Coachella, just to see that one. Also, I think at the drive-in was reuniting for that uh, Coachella too. That would have been cool. That, that I was pretty excited about too. That would have been really neat to see live. Um, but other than those two things, that was, I think the only year that I actually was ever even considered going to a Coachella, but it was, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking on their website. It's like, it's like 600 for a ticket. Yeah. And then for like a, so the ticket gives you a weekend, 600 for a ticket, but then you gotta like, then you gotta go to like camping 
or you or or you get everything you eat or drink you're gonna have to buy there i'm assuming you unless i don't think you can bring in a ton i don't i don't think i, I mean i really don't know like i said i all the logistics of it were like starting out just the ticket price for us was like all right well that's kind of like what we budget for a lot of our trips in, in general <laughs> so yeah looking uh, at looking at all the coachella shit i think to just have like if you were to have like not even having a like over the top oh my fucking god like let's have the craziest weekend to i think to have a weekend that gives you the base level of comfort where it's not that stressful i don't see you fuck i was about to say two grand but then you got to add in plane tickets and shit right i don't yeah. see you leaving that weekend like you could you could leave that weekend just under three grand I may no maybe and that's maybe. like maybe like you're hoping that you don't dehydrate too i like i like a lot of water well i'm trying i'm trying to i'm trying to include like getting food and stuff there I, I would say if if you're getting food then if you're adding food and then also because at a certain point you know how every vacation goes no matter what you budget you're like at some point you're like fuck it let's like why don't we just eat out every night and you're like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah. like, whatever, whatever you budgeted or you tried to be responsible yeah. with is gonna be I'm 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 thinking closer to probably five or six thousand. If you're trying to come from PA to California, all the other shit, then also you gotta think about what other then you also just paying your fucking shitty bills that you have while you're doing this stupid response irresponsible thing. It would have been a great story, but it, I, I think I'd still be paying for it 10 years later. You know what I mean? Twelve, whatever it was, like twelve years later. Damn, that was a long time ago. I gotta watch. Uh... Plus, I, I, I got, I got to drive to Atlanta to see them. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I, it wasn't that bad. I, we were still actually living in uh, Florida at the time, and they ended up playing eight hours away from us. So, yeah. And then, and then when you get to Coachella, you can go stand in this audience. And the band will look that small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll go like, oh, yeah, this is just like if I. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, baby, my reproductions on, on YouTube. Oh, and you muted yourself. Nice. No, going. I would no sell it. Don't sell it. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely I would definitely have regretted that choice. Like, I feel like especially when they just like a couple months later, they were like, by the way, we're coming right near your house, Pat. <laughs> that's the funniest part. Well, that's the funniest part that like you forget about is right. you're spending all that money, all that fucking money. And then when you finally get to go see that band, that's you have to you go, see. you have to go stand in a sea of like sweaty fucking drugged out kids. And the band you like is going to be look like fucking ants. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna hear it two seconds after they play it, whatever it is, <laughs> or say it. And then you're not going to, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be as much of an experience. But like, again, it, it's, it's more of, I think you'll be able to justify it a little bit more. I probably wouldn't. I'd be a lot more pessimistic, but I think most people would be able to justify it and be like, well, no, you know, it's pretty cool. And like, you remember the sunset that day and it was really neat. And then the, he said that one thing, like, no. The the way I did it with refused was way better, and I I took a gamble, and I won. But I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest it with, with a lot of people. If it was a thing like, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, whatever, I, I can't even think of a I cannot think of a band reuniting that I would give enough of a shit about to go. Like that was the last one. Yeah, I'd have to go reuniting. see. I'd have to go see what the other. Because here's my thing. I don't know a lot about what the other commodities at Coachella are. I'd have yeah. to see how much they rule because anyone who's at Coachella, like, I guess, like, like Pusha T was at Coachella, but but again, he's not really, it's not really, it's, he's, you know, not really he's not really touring like that. I don't think. I'm not really up to date on Pusha T's tour, actually, now that I'm saying it out loud. But anyone I'd see at Coachella, I'm like... Yeah, even if you're paying the crazy fees at like a fucking arena venue, it's still not going to be as much. No, and and like maybe like Foo Fighters would be pretty cool to see, but like I don't. Yeah, see, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think what we're kind of realizing is Coachella just ain't for us. <laughs> I think it's a. I think it's like it's definitely for like younger people or the people who are way more into like the intense party scene who yeah. are really concerned with like what's cool and what's hip and stuff like that. But I don't know. There's probably. Yeah, I don't know. That definitely seems like a young kids what money thing to do. So this isn't uh, 
necessarily for us, I guess. And maybe I maybe I will go through a couple of those bands. I'll go through a lot of the list and I'll just I'll just search every band on there and I'll I'll listen to every one of them. You have Spotify, right? Yeah, I do. I bet, I guarantee you there's a Spotify playlist for all this shit. Of all the bands featured at Coachella. Yeah, probably. All right. This is a good place to wrap up. Is that the one? Wait, real quick. Is that the one where they uh, burn that really big man? Uh, no, you're thinking of Burning Man. Got it. But actually, that one also too seems like it sucks now too. Yeah, I don't. I, I watched they... a. Uh, I watched a like a little mini. No, not a documentary, but like a a YouTuber who was like my experience at Burning Man, like a Burning Man vlog. Yeah. And it's just like it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. But when you're there, it's it's like like it's like a city. You're not fucking camping or well, I mean, depending on what you go there with. But it's another thing where it's like most people who can afford to go to Burning Man are again these like rich Brooklyn-y trust fund kids. Well, now it's like it's like when people go camping and they go like, well, okay, so we got a cabin that has air conditioning and we got a refrigerator and we got TV and cable and internet. And it's like, so what are you doing? You're just driving far to stay at your house. Like that's all <laughs> you're what the fuck are you doing? So it's like Burning Man is like this whole thing where we made a community. You left a community to go to a community like why don't you just move idiot that's called moving like you went <laughs> that's so stupid to go to some place but yeah but at the end we burn this big thing like yeah it's <laughs> okay it's just so stupid to me i think that once they commercialize the drug so much like uh, you know what i mean like that it used to be a cool place where people go get naked do drugs it really wasn't about the music or anything I think they actually made that one too much about the music, which is really funny because now it's like it's Kia presents Burning Man. Although Burning Man, I'm trying to find the video of it. Burning Man does still have its uh, essence. Oh, they took it off. <laughs> Did you ever see? I'm trying to find it on YouTube. Did you ever see the video? This guy got too high and fucking bolted into the Burning Man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> and it's oh yeah, dude. Every video of it's deleted. Oh it's, what? Did he die or did he get hurt? Oh he wait. had to have gotten hurt. Oh, the guy who ran directly into a giant fire? <laughs> yeah. He, he got a he got a few bumps and bruises. <laughs> but yo, dude, this dude was gacked out. And I dude, I I oh fuck. Here, wait, guy, and we'll or wrap maybe, up on this. Or maybe Andy, maybe he was the only sane one there. There's another way to look at it. Damn. You might have just fucking. Yeah, I can't. All right. It's going to take me too long to find well, those. I'm so bad. At home, I'm, I'm, I'm so bad at Google. No, they took Crazy. all the videos that were removed from fucking YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this dude got fucked up and ran directly into the fire at Burning Man. It was the funniest death I've ever seen. Guys, gals. <laughs> Everyone in between. Thank you for hanging out and watching this. We love you all. Until next time, be about it. Peace.